Is it possible that the first solar system model made by man is the ancient Jewish menorah? I find this interesting, so let's check it out. Spoiler, I think this is nonsense, but I'll use it as a springboard to talk about something else. I was strolling through TikTok some time ago and this came up. I assume the TikToker Voice of Reason Official 2 is a Christian based on what I've seen of his videos. But anyway, he has something to say about the menorah. The menorah, which is a candelabra with nine candles, has a center candle called the servant candle and eight smaller candles, four on each side, which looks exactly like the profile of our solar system. He's talking about a specific type of menorah here, one used in the celebration of Hanukkah. This menorah is called the Hanukkiah. There's another type of menorah called the Temple Menorah, but we'll talk about that one later. The Jewish tradition is that the servant lamp is lit first and it provides the light for the other eight candles. Meaning that the candles don't provide their own light, they're actually lit by the servant candle, which would represent the sun. And there's more. The candles on the menorah branch off from the center but they appear to be connected. And we see the same thing with the planets of our solar system. Mercury and Venus are called twins. They're very similar, they're uninhabitable and way too hot. Mars and Earth are also similar. Mars is called Earth's sister planet. They're similar in size, similar in composition, both potentially habitable. Here's where you see a little mistake on his part. From what I can remember, Venus considered Earth's twin, not Mars. In fact, they say Mars and Earth are not twins because their chemical compositions are so different. It's starting to look more and more like he's grasping at straws here. It's not that they aren't similar in some ways, of course. If you wanted to, you could probably find superficial similarities between any two planets. Plus, it's a strange idea to suggest considering there had been nine planets in our solar system before Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. A planet is defined by people, and that definition can and has changed. Who knows how long the current definition will remain? Plus, if they find another planet, as some astronomers believe is inevitable, does this mean that whatever god had hidden this meaning within the Hanukkah only intended for it to have that meaning for this intermediate time? Anyway, as common as it has been in Judeo-Christian history to attribute all sorts of meanings to images and symbols, I thought this particular one was a nice little springboard to discuss something else. The other type of menorah that I mentioned earlier, the Temple Menorah, is older than the Hanukkah and is actually its ancestor. It has seven branches, not nine. This is significant because the number seven is very important in Judaism and Christianity and their biblical texts themselves. Have you ever wondered though where that came from? Here's where I borrow some words from Dr. Francesca Stavrakopoulou, who was interviewed on Myth Vision. So a seven is, is a very um, significant number in a lot of ancient Southwest Asian cultures. And so time is very commonly divided up. I mean, not, not always. I mean, in, in some contexts, um, like in certain Egyptian contexts, the number 10 is very important. Um, but seven is very common in a lot of ancient Southwest Asian cultures as a means of marking time. And probably, primarily, scholars think, because that you could see seven planets in the night sky, you know, with the naked eye at that time. So these seem to, you know, it was a, it was a particularly powerful, special number. Did you catch that? So in some obscure, tangential way, our TikToker friend might be onto something, right? Dr. Stavrakopoulou mentioned that there were seven planets visible in the night sky. That seems to be a bit of a slip. The seven classical planets of antiquity are, indeed, seven, but they are not all just visible at night. They were the celestial objects, visible with the naked eye, that moved across the sky while the stars seemed to be some sort of backdrop. The Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. It doesn't take much imagination to think it logical that these moving objects in the sky would be considered timekeepers to ancient people. Genesis 1 verse 14 says as much, that the lights in the sky mark time, and since there were only seven that they could see that seemed to move independent of the rest of the stars, they must be special. The most famous example of the importance of the number seven in biblical mythology is the creation week and the establishment of the Sabbath, the seventh day. However, this concept of dividing time by sevens pops up a lot in the rest of the Bible too. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is seven days long, as is the Feast of Tabernacles, and, biblically speaking, the former is in the first month of the Hebrew calendar, and the latter, the seventh month. The Bible also mentions a seven-year cycle that ends in a Sabbath year, and a seven-time seven-year cycle followed by a fiftieth year called the Jubilee year. 
There's even mention of a period of 70 sevens in the book of Daniel. Speaking of Daniel, which tells the story of a man exiled to Babylon, it seems that the Jewish importance of the number seven and even their seven day week was something they got from Babylon. They were under Babylonian rule during the height of the empire, and there were other things that they got from them like the very script they used to write the Hebrew Bible and even the Aramaic language they spoke by the time Jesus would have come on the scene. Weeks were not a foreign concept to people from that era and region. Egyptians had a 10 day week and the Romans had an 8 day week. However, as imperial powers do, Babylon spread its influence and the 7 day week with it. To this day, the days of the week are named after the classical planets in many languages, including English. The number 7, as a number associated with time, became so important that it influenced Jewish literature and symbology, hence the menorah. So yes, it seems there is a connection between the menorah and the planets, but I don't think it's the one our friend on TikTok thinks. It seems to me that the planets, known at the time, influenced the temple menorah's candle count, rather than the Hanukkah menorah somehow being some prophetic arrow towards this one period in human history when there are eight planets. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, I've been going through some stuff, but I aim to do more regular uploads going forward. Please comment, subscribe and share. It will show up my self-esteem and help my channel grow. Happy Holidays!